Hello everybody, in this episode I'm going to be covering the masking features inside of Premiere. What the masking features are that they've added probably a bit over like a year and a half ago inside is a really nice feature that they've added to pretty much all the effects that you can add to to a clip inside of inside of the effect controls. When you select a clip, you can go up here to this area here under your video effects, under your effect controls panel, and you will see, actually there's already one here on the opacity. The opacity has uh, this masking feature right here. I'm not to use it on that right now. Uh, what I'm going to use, I'm going to find a specific effect. Say we want to hide the face of somebody right here and we want to animate. Notice this shot right here as I play through it. This guy's walking and say we want to hide this guy's face as he's walking right there. Because uh, let's say he's involved in some big government conspiracy and we got to hide that guy's face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my effects and you can do this on any of the effects that you can add. You can do it on, in fact, if you say you want to brighten somebody's face a little bit. Well, actually, let, let, let's show you how to do that. First of all, I'm going to go, I'm going to type in mosaic here and it brings up this little effect right here, this mosaic. I'm going to drag this and drop this to this clip and look what it does. All of a sudden it puts mosaics to the entire clip. So let's get those mosaics exactly where I want to be. I've got this clip selected. I'm going to go up to my mosaics under my effects control panel while that clip is selected and we're going to change the number of horizontal and vertical blocks. I'm going to change this. Let's pump it up to like 60 and 60 here. And now we've got more of like this kind of uh, block, blocky thing going. Let's go to 100 and see what we get. There we go. Okay, that's good. That's going to be good enough to hide his face right there without doing destroying the image too much. But now we just want it to cover his face, which is pretty simple because we can just go over here these are your mask options. You have a ellipse ma mask, a square mask, and a bezier that you can draw your own one. Uh, and this is called the free draw bezier. Let's just try a circle right now, and then we'll come back to the the, the uh, free draw bezier one and try that as well. Right now, I'm just going to click on this, and it automatically adds a mask here. And this is going to be the only place that that effect takes control here. I'm going to grab. Uh, now we're going to put this over his face. So I'm going to move my hand over this. I just have to move the tool over this, and it turns into a hand. I'm going to drag it over his face. Now I'm going to grab this little uh, node here, drag it in, grab this little node, drag it in, grab this one, and we're going to keep doing that until we get kind of the basic shape of his face. Right about there. Now we've basically got his face covered with mosaics, and we can't tell who this governor, who this government conspirator who this uh, guy is that's like messing with the government and then and, and we want to hide him so to protect him. So anyway, uh, so what we've got out here is we've also got, uh, and you can kind of operate these tools uh, here with the visual as well as over here. You got this mask feather. Watch what happens as I click and drag on this. You see this feather and it's actually this little uh, circle tool right here as you grab this and drag it out it does the same thing. It feathers the mask kind of gradually from this inside little dotted line to this outside dotted line right there. So we get that kind of feather so it's not such a harsh edge we, and we can actually go to mask expansion right here and make that mask and make this mask larger by clicking and dragging to the right makes the mask larger and covers his face and then kind of feathers off. Once we play this though, notice that mask kind of, it stays right here on the screen and his face moves out of this. So I'm going to arrow back to the beginning, arrow up to the beginning of this clip. We're going to get this to the right, the beginning of the clip and get this mask in the right spot. What we've got here is this mask path here. This is an animation tool right here. So as you click on uh, track selected mask forward, it's going to track the pixels on his face and try to lock to his face and it will actually change scale and uh, position on the screen based on the size of his face changing. So let's hit this little uh, track selected mask forward. You can also do this backwards as well. I'm starting at the beginning of the clip and going forward. And we can see that moving and every time it's updating and trying to track to his face. And it's actually doing a pretty good job of tracking there. So I'm going to let this track a bit and then we're going to, then I'll come back when it's finished and we'll take a look at what it's done. I'm coming back here and noticing the, uh, where this mask is at this point here. It's kind of gotten a little bit off of his face. So what I'd probably recommend with a shot like this, it's got a lot of movement to it. And look at this, it is actually locking to his face pretty well. It is covering his face and it's staying is keeping the mosaics over his face and covering up pretty well. But what I'd probably recommend with this is kind of move in the middle somewhere and grab that mask and drag it over his face there. And you can actually change your keyframes as well. Notice how to add a keyframe there once I moved it. And now I would say from a place where you got a good solid look at his face, you're going to tra track backwards, then move back to this keyframe and track forwards. Let's try to track backwards from there and see what results we get. I'm going to track backwards. 
And now it is tracking, staying locked to his face, and I'll come back when that's finished. All right, now that that's through tracking backwards, it's done all these keyframes here. Let me make a little bit more room to take a look at that. See all these individual keyframes changing where that mask exists at a certain time, and that actually did a really good job of tracking up to that point. So what I can do now is move it to the end here, uh, a little past that point, a little past that last keyframe, and arrow backwards so it lands on this previous keyframe, and now play forward and do the same thing, tracking that, uh, tracking his face. You know, let that track there. Watch the progress moving. There it goes. One thing to notice as it is tracking forward here, his face is starting to go a little bit off screen and look how good of a job this does keeping track of this guy's face as it, as it is starting to go off the screen. Premiere does a pretty good job, but we'll show you what happens when the face goes all the way off the screen and what you have to do to complete this once it finishes, finishes the tracking process. So notice as his face starts going off screen here, let's watch the tracking and see what it does. Is still keeping track of it pretty well, and he's got, he's got the bottom part of the face, and as it moves off screen, and right there it starts losing track of his face as it goes off screen. And here it actually stops tracking his face. And it really doesn't matter because his face is off the screen now, so it actually did a really good job. But if you want to get really nitpicky here and finish that mask tracking off the screen, what we can do, I'm going to click in here in the effects controls. I'm going to zoom up on this by hitting plus a few times. It'll zoom up closer to your keyframes here. And uh, we're going to hit arrow right and kind of jump one frame at a time. And right there is where it kind of starts losing track. So what I'm going to do is uh, zoom this out a little bit. I'm going to grab these keyframes. Let's zoom out enough to see all these keyframes. I'm going to grab all these keyframes from that point forward and I'm just going to delete them. Now I'm going to arrow over a few times. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, and his face is pretty much completely off there. What I can do is grab this mask and it will add a new keyframe here. I'm going to drag it off the screen there completely and it is added a new keyframe. So what it's going to do is it's going to interpolate from this keyframe, this last keyframe here, to this keyframe to move it off screen. Let's see how that works. And look at that, it moves off. And if it moves a little too fast, I can just grab this and drag it over to the right, make it last longer, and now it moves off the screen until his face is off, and there we go. And it did a great job of tracking his face. We've got those mosaics on his face the entire time. Now if we want, if we're saying, well, it's not hidden enough, I can just simply go to my mosaics here. Let's increase this to, or let's decrease this to like 50 and 50 and make this more blocky so you really can't tell whose face that is. And now this guy is safe and he won't be murdered by any government employees as he reveals their secrets because we have his face completely covered there. And that is one practical use of, uh, this, of this motion tracking that you can use for your mask. Let's show you how to do some different shapes here. Okay, here's another clip where we play through it, and this we got this tilt down to reveal a person down below at the bottom of the pole here. But we move up here, and say we want to do a track on this uh, sign right here, just so we can maybe affect the color or something like that on, on that sign. So I've got a Lumetri color panel added to this. You can go down inside your uh, video effects and drag and drop it, or you can go into color mode and do it as well. But right now, let's do this. We're going to create, I'm going to use a Bezier curve just uh, to show how to do it. This could use a square just to fit that in there, but I'm going to actually use the Bezier curve and actually add the points myself. Uh, if you, By the way, if you click and drag, it's going to make a Bezier curve. Let's show you kind of the difference here. Notice how this kind of makes a circular mask here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do a square, and then you close that and close the circle, but those Beziers uh, give you the ability to make kind of a curved node there. So let's delete this mask here. I'm going to delete these uh, delete those masks there. I'm going to delete that mask there and I'm going to grab my free bezier and I'm going to click on this corner, uh, click on this corner, click here, here, and here. And there we go. And we've created a mask just over that area. So now whatever we correct is just going to correct that area. I'm going to go under my color tab here. And under the color tab, let's say, let's go under our HSL secondary. We're going to create a secondary and make this really brilliant yellow. I'm going to hit uh, select the yellow color right there. And we're going to sh tell this to show our color gray here. It's going to show in our gray the area that's not selected and the yellow that is selected. I'm going to increase the hue and just mess with this until I get like a wider range of yellow. There we go. We're starting to select all that yellow. And luminance is probably going to select the rest of that there. 
There we go. So we've got all that yellow. Let's say we're going to make this area very brilliant yellow and we want to mask it out so nothing else is, is being color corrected right there. With that selected, I'm going to go into correction and I'm going to grab this and drag it up to yellow and make that super, super bright yellow. Look at that, how that's increasing. And actually grab my, actually grab the saturation and crank this web just to exaggerate it, just to, to make the point of what's happening there. Let's turn this, let's turn this on and off and show you the before and after. Look at the difference, how that's way more brilliant. I'm going to grab the gain here and boost that up as well. We're just going to make that so freaking brilliant that it's just going to look very, very, very bright yellow. Add some contrast to that as well. And there we go. we got this super bright. Now it almost looks like a graphic, but I just want to show you what this will do here. So we've got that selected there. Uh, we've, and notice it's just color grading inside of this mask. We're going to feather that a little bit just to feather it off. Let's go back to our effects. Go to our mask feather and soften the edge of that mask a little bit. And we don't need to expand it a little bit. But now we can do our track. So let's do our track from right there because this is right where the camera, I'm going to move this to right where the camera starts tilting down right about there. Move up till it's in frame and hit our track forward to let it track forward and track this sign down. Okay, that's tracking forward. While that's doing that, I'm going to stop and then we'll come back and show the finished progress. Okay, now that that is done, let's take a look at this. We're going to move this back. Right there. And as we go through this frame by frame, look at that. Look how it locks to this sign. Does a really good job of keeping up with that. Keeps that bright yellow on that sign right there as we move up. And now look as it moves out. If we want to animate the rest of that off screen, it's quite easy. I'm just going to click and drag the rest of these keyframes right here. Delete them. I'm going to arrow back. Move. Let's zoom up on these keyframes here. With my effects window selected here, I'm going to hit arrow, I'm going to hit plus a couple times and zoom up and see where we need to eliminate uh, these keyframes. So right about there, we can select those keyframes, delete, and as we move back, right there the sign's completely off, but this mask is not completely off. So on this keyframe, I'm just going to drag that mask completely off. Click back in my effect window here, and as we arrow back, now as we move forward, that last keyframe is programmed to be off the screen. And there we go. It does a pretty dang good job of tracking onto that. In fact, just to make sure that that is tracking, keeping that mask. I know we've got those brilliant yellow colors, but let's do this instead. I'm going to go to the Lumetri colors. We're going to move down. Uh, let's go to Saturation right here under the Lumetri color and click on that and put it to zero. So now it has turned it completely black and white. You can see the little yellow glow there around the edge. So what I could do is go up to my mask on that Lumetri color and we can expand that mask. Let's go by about three pixels and see what that does. Not quite enough. So let's just drag this over till we see that expand. Select the mask so we can actually see it happening and we see the expansion happening around the sign there. And we can get that expanded enough that it fills in the rest of those colors. Now that is black and white. And as we move down, the rest of the image is not. Look at all these banners that are yellow. And that one is black and white. And that mask tracks with it. Pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool little function there for using this mask and track. And you can use it on pretty much any color. Uh, one other suggestion I have is if you're tracking somebody's face and somebody else crosses in front, one thing that you can keyframe is the opacity here, is the mask opacity. So within this shot here, if somebody crosses in front of it, you can, uh, you can add a keyframe on your opacity here. Click right there for when the person's passing in front and add another keyframe right there. So we can add a keyframe like right here to start. We can move in a few frames as the person is passing across the screen. Hit another keyframe and we can do that again for an, a kind of an on and off effect here. Like that. And now we can, uh, now I've got a, a total of four keyframes here. We'll say that this area is the person is where the person is crossing in front. We can arrow back, go to the beginning keyframe right here. That one's at 100%. Go to the next one. This one's going to be at zero. And I type in zero, and then the mask turns off. Go to this one, turn this one to zero as well, and then the next keyframe is at 100. And right here, it turns the mask off and then back on, and you see it go back to black and white there. So just some kind of things you can do with your own keyframes on all these attributes down there, something to help out with the mask. That, But this is a pretty powerful feature that they've added to Premiere. It works really well for the most part, especially on even some, some shaky cameras. It still works pretty well. If it's super, super shaky, you're going to have some troubles with it. But uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please post them, and I'll see you on the next episode.